Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to reInvent 2020 and welcome to this session, Games 303, on how Ubisoft is building a multi-platform multiplayer game on AWS. In this session, you will learn how Ubisoft has built a serverless, containerized architecture for their new game, leveraging AWS services to provide a highly performant and reliable experience to players around the world while reducing operational costs. My name is Nari Gopala, and I'm your AWS host for this session. I'm excited to be hosting this session, but before we get to the main topic, I wanted to take a few minutes to quickly introduce AWS Game Tech and some of the solutions we have for hosting and scaling your game on AWS. Whether you're a small indie game developer or a large game publisher, only one thing really matters to you. That is making a fun and compelling game that players really want to play. And how do you do that often makes a difference to the success of your game. And this is where AWS Game Tech can help. So what is AWS Game Tech? It is a collection of products and services from across Amazon that provides robust, scalable solution for every stage in your game's life cycle regardless of the size of your studio. With AWS, Twitch, Prime Gaming, and our managed game services, we are striving to be the most customer-obsessed company in the games industry. Whether you're trying to implement a player experience feature, such as progression in the game, or player engagement, or anti-cheat with your community, or a technical backend feature, such as identity and authentication, or a player profile database, AWS Game Tech can help you with the right tool and the right solution for the right use case. We can also help you with moving your game production pipeline to the cloud or provide you guidance on various other areas pertaining to game design, development, and publishing platforms. In today's session, we will focus on one of the key backend service areas that is game server hosting and scaling in the cloud. However, I recommend that you check out our other sessions on this track and other tracks for customer stories on analytics, machine learning, and various other topics that are important for game developers and publishers. When it comes to hosting and scaling your game servers on AWS, the choice is really yours. You can either build your own environment in the cloud or use one of our managed services to do it. Regardless of which path you choose to take, we are here to support you and help you succeed. If you choose to build your own, firstly, you can leverage AWS global infrastructure, 24 regions, 77 availability zones, and over 220 points of presence to ensure a seamless, low latency experience for your games where your players are. Secondly, you can scale your server capacity dynamically up or down with changing player demand and pay for only what you use. Thirdly, you can securely authenticate your players and reduce their wait times to join games. Finally, you can also leverage our serverless infrastructure and run your game without even thinking about servers. Alternatively, you, you can also choose to go with Amazon GameLift, a managed game service for session-based multiplayer games that leverages the power and reliability of AWS. Whether you're looking for a fully managed solution like um, uh, GameLift or just the feature you need, GameLift will help you deploy, operate, and scale dedicated servers, maximize your cost savings while delivering the lowest latency possible for your players. With that introduction, I would like to now hand off to Marie and Naomi to present how Ubisoft is building a multi-platform multiplayer game on AWS. Hi, I'm Naomi Barnes, Live Operations Manager on Roller Champions at Ubisoft Montreal. I'm currently playing Breath of the Wild on Switch. And hi, I'm Marie, Cloud Development Engineer at Ubisoft Montreal, working on Roller Champions. I love infrastructure projects and gaming, and I'm currently playing Disco Elysium on PC. Ubisoft is a global company that has its worldwide headquarters in France. 
It's best known for its game development and game publishing. Ubisoft has studios worldwide. Ubisoft Montreal is home to more than 3,800 employees, and those employees have helped to develop and support brands such as Rainbow Six, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, For Honor, and now Roller Champions. Our agenda for this talk is, what's Roller Champions? Small team, big dreams. What's behind the roller rink? And on the road to glory. What is Roller Champions? Let's have a look at our closed alpha promotional video to get a feel for what's in the rink. We wanted to combine the power of spectacle and the fun of gaming. Thus, Roller Champions was born. Roller Champions is a 3v3 competitive sport multiplayer game offering multi-platform online gaming capabilities. You work as a team to pass, evade, tackle, and outsmart your opponents in order to stay in control of the ball. To open the goal, you need to do one full lap and stay in control for the lap. And then the goal um, that starts being counted from the goal line. Upon completion of the lap, the goal will open, allowing you to score a point. The scoring works this way. It, it's based on the number of laps you do. One lap is one point, two laps is three points, and three laps, if you're daring enough, is five points. And five points wins the match, but your team has to stay in control of the ball for the entire time. Matches are seven minutes long or five points long, with the possibility of a three-minute overtime. Small team, big dreams. So you're thinking, why, why AWS? What does AWS have to offer a small team with big dreams? Well, it's ready to use solutions. It's out of the box, ready to use. No time is wasted on waiting for equipment, preparing equipment, and so on. The documentation is clear, concise, and easily accessible. And the support team is always willing to help. This allows us to add or alter services easily with little impact to the rest of the team. Its managed services allows our small team to manage the infrastructure efficiently, providing optimal uptime. It's reliable. With solid SLAs, the infrastructure is operational with little downtime. And as any gamer knows, reliable servers make the gaming experience smooth and enjoyable. Its scalability and on-demand elasticity this allows us to scale up or down seamlessly to manage our players' demands. It also helps us to keep operational costs low and uptime high. It's available globally, allows us to get the best in-game experience for our players no matter where they are in the world when they're playing. It's high availability. It's not just about infrastructure. Being an online game, uptime is the utmost importance. Being able to access the servers as required, quickly and reliably helps to provide a solid player experience. And low operational costs. It's not just about infrastructure costs, but also about reducing the human cost. This helps our small team run infrastructure while at the same time keeping the costs low through using only what we need. And here's Marie to discuss what we have behind the roller rink. 
Thanks, Naomi. So let me present to you what's behind the roller rink. So we would like to give you an overview of how we develop our backend in AWS. We'll look into how we've built our custom matchmaking and go through an entire game session. We'll explore how we're leveraging AWS to help us debug the game. And we will end on how we have set up our deployments for fast and quality releases. Roller Champion, as Naomi explained, is an online multiplayer and multi-platform game with game servers hosted on GameLift. If you're not familiar with game servers, there are two most popular type of network model for online games. In the peer-to-peer -peer model, all the game clients are interconnected. One of them will be elected to act as referee for the game session. In contrast, we have the dedicated game server model where all the game clients are connected to single shared game server. And this shared server will be the authority for the game session. Using dedicated game server ensures we're fully in control of game sessions, hence reducing cheating opportunities and guaranteeing a more reliable experience for players. So this is the model that we decided to go with. Before diving into matchmaking, here's a high-level view of our backend in AWS. Here you can see how game clients are able to connect to our backend to request matches. They can then connect to a game session, create a game lift, and play. So let's see how this process works in our backend. In terms of requirements, we want our matchmaking to have a great player experience. This means having the right balance between matchmaking players with similar skill rating and wait time to get to a game session. If players are waiting too long for a match, they won't like the experience even if the match is of high quality in terms of opponents. We also want to offer multiple game types, so we want a system that's very flexible. Adding or removing components should be done fairly easily. We also want to be available in multiple regions to satisfy player latencies. And lastly, we need the matchmaking to be scalable as it needs to adapt to player's growth. As you can see here, the player engagement varies a lot during a single day, so we need the matchmaking that can scale up and down according to those changes in load. In the video game industry, matchmaking is one of the critical features of online games, which is why we wanted to show you how to achieve a custom matchmaking in AWS. Roller Champion is a competitive game, so quality matchmaking is especially critical to its success. You might be wondering, what about FlexMatch? So FlexMatch is a matchmaking service offered by AWS as part of GameLift. And for us, we wanted to control the full matchmaking system and its setup, so FlexMesh Flex was not a viable choice for our matchmaking. Starting a new game session, this is the menu that you will see in the game. When clicking play, you will be put into a queue that we generally call the matchmaking queue, and you will then wait to be matched with five other players. Once all players are ready, a match can start. Let's go through the entire flow. So once you're plus play, the game client will send a matchmaking request to our backend. The entry point of that is an API gateway. It will take care of authentication and authorization, as well as forwarding the request to one of our lambdas. In this case, the match ticket lambda handles the request. This lambda will first fetch plays information from DynamoDB, by profile information and matchmaking ranking. It then sends a message containing that player information into the match ticket queue. And lastly, the Lambda will return a successful response to the game client. The game client is now in the matchmaking queue waiting for other players. This second part of the matchmaking is done asynchronously. So the session, the session manager service receives this new matchmaking ticket coming in the match ticket queue. It then matches players into groups of six and creates a session. The session information is then posted into the queue session in SQS. The server manager receives this new session and asks for a corresponding placement in GameLift. When the placement is successful, the server manager posts a notification message in the corresponding queue with the GameLift session information, like the IP and the port. The notification service receives this message and sends it to the client. And finally, the game client is able to connect to the game session. The players are then starting a game together. So just to make a small note on the communication, We've mentioned the notification queue and notification service in our matchmaking flow. So during the matchmaking process, the game clients need a way to track its, the status of its matchmaking request uh, to take required actions. So using event notifications, the game client is able to quickly track events efficiently. And the same system is used for other asynchronous communication between the game, the game client, the server, and the backend. And this, combined with our matchmaking architecture, allows us to have a very reactive system 
so a highly competitive and fast-paced matchmaking, which means more fun for players. Now let's have a look at the rest of the game session flow. What happens during a game session? So while the game client is connected to the game server, it will also send game context logs and metrics to our lambdas through the same API gateway. And the game server will also do the same. These logs and metrics are used for game analytics, and they're very useful for improving the game and debugging. So now you won. Congrats. Uh, let's also have a look at what ending a game session looks like behind the rink. So when the session ends, the game server sends a request to our end lambda with the session information. The lambda will do some processing, like calculating scores, updating player profiles. It then sends a message into the notification queue with information for each player. The notification service receives those messages and updates each game client with their information. The game client will then show the game session recap to the player. And this entire matchmaking flow can then start again for another session. So we've seen how our backend handles the matchmaking process as well as the full game session. But how does it work in GameLift and how does it work for multi-regions? So when a session is ready, the server manager asks for a placement in GameLift. What does that look like? The service creates a new placement on a GameLift queue with the session information like how many players and their latencies. That queue will then select one of the fleets in a region with the most ideal latency conditions for all players. So for example, if most of the players are closer to region one, the queue will try first to find an available space for the game in the fleet located in that region. Though that logic is handled by GameLift, so we don't have to worry about it in our backend. The only thing we need to send is the latency of all players. So to build this custom matchmaking and game session flow we've just seen, we've had to update our code and infrastructure through continuous deployment. Which brings me to our next point, how do we deploy? So through the last two years, we've had time to test and improve our, de our deployment pipeline to match our development flow. And we'll show you a quick overview of how it works. So for deploying the backend code, we're using GitLab in combination with an internal tool. When a new version of the code is pushed onto the master branch, a GitLab pipeline will build code artifacts and then send them to an S3 bucket in AWS. We can then use our internal tool to select this new version to be deployed. The tool will select the corresponding artifacts in the S3 bucket and then update our lambdas and containers with those. This setup allows us to have multiple versions available for deployments with an easy rollback solution. On the infrastructure side, we are using GitLab and Terraform. When the new version of the infrastructure is pushed in GitLab, a pipeline will run with Terraform to plan the changes that will be made. After validating the plan changes, we can apply them. Since all the infrastructure made, since all the infrastructure changes are made through this automated process, human prone errors are largely reduced, and it also helps us feel more confident in our deployments and their impacts. So the game build deployment process is very similar to our backend code deployment. When a new code version is pushed in GitLab, a pipeline will build a new game client and server and upload them into our internal NAS. We can then select this new version in our internal tool. This tool will fetch the corresponding server from our internal NAS and upload it to GameLift. A new fleet will be created with that build and the configured queue updated to that fleet. As the full process is automated, it allows for different teams to take care of deployments, not only the dev team. Having those three types of deployments helped us to empower our teams to deploy continuously with less impact. Let's move to our last section, monitoring and debugging. When building a game, and actually any kind of project, it's really important to have easy access to logs and metrics. Using CloudWatch, Elasticsearch, and Kibana, we were able to create dashboards for different teams. The developers, live operations, and quality control teams use those dashboards to debug and detect anomalies. We're also using Redis to pre-process game metrics before injecting them into Elasticsearch. X-Ray was also a big component when developing or debugging, and it has become incredibly useful during our load tests. So that is how we are building our game, Roller Champions, in AWS. As we've seen, we're using Lambda functions combined with ECS services and SQS queues for our serverless matchmaking. 
We're also using Amazon GameLab dedicated game servers to hold the game sessions. So this ties into what Naomi was explaining in the beginning on why we chose AWS. We have a very small operations team, so using those services help us have all the features and requirements we need out of the box. We also showed an overview of our three major types of deployments, code, game builds, and infrastructure. And finally, we explored how we were leveraging AWS services to help us debug the game. We've shown the backend of Roller Champions. Now let's talk about our preparations for life. In order to ship a game confidently, running load test is essential. So to prepare for life, we're trying to run as many as we can, which is very easy in AWS. We can grow our infrastructure in a matter of minutes with AWS auto scaling for fleets, ECS services, or Lambda provision concurrency. This allows us to see where weaknesses in our infrastructure might be so we can fix them before going live. Using AWS, we were also able to integrate those load tests into our CI CD meaning we can run them on a schedule and a single person can take care of them. Those load tests also help massively when preparing for our life phases, and I will pass it on to Naomi to, Naomi to explain more about those. Thanks, Marie. Beyond load testing, another way we test our games before launch is through live phase testing. These are usually referred to as open or closed alphas and betas. On Roller Champions, it was a goal of ours to get the game in the hands of the players as soon as possible. Not only did we want feedback from the players, but we used live phase testing to, test ver uh, ver to verify different metrics, including server stability, matchmaking times, quality of matchmaking, and so much more. Our first live phase started the day we announced. It was the Ubisoft conference at E3 2019. The world was introduced to Roller Champions. Not only was, the game, was it a game announcement, but we also announced that an E3 demo was playable at that time on PC for four full days. We got to see our players in-game, streaming, posting, and heard their feedback and checked their metrics. We, after the four days, we closed down our servers and looked at what worked and what needed improvement in operations. We took our learnings back to development to iterate and build upon the base we had just given the public. Our second live phase, took place during March 2020. This time it was our closed alpha. The test again was on PC, but this time it took, over, took place over 13 days. During that time, we tested deployments, improved custom auto scaling, customization, and so much more. Again, we looked at our operability as well as player feedback, and we closed the servers and went back to development to iterate some more. Since we leveraged so many AWS services, it took very little time to set up our infrastructure to be ready for the live phase testing, as well it was super easy to close down the servers when we were done. It was low cost on both human side and infrastructure side. If the live phase testing not, is not only important to the development cycle, but also to the operational life cycle. Getting data from players, making data-driven decisions, being able to easily and seamlessly make necessary changes helps keep a smooth experience for our players and a great player experience is our main goal. So we've discussed what Roller Champions is, a competitive multiplayer sport online game. We've seen what's behind the roller rink, custom serverless matchmaking with ECS, Lambda, and SQS. We've seen debugging and deployment processes and the importance of different testing to make sure the preparations for launch. Roll up to glory in 2021. Look for news about Roller Champions on social media. We'll be seeing you in the rink. Thank you, Naomi and Marie, for not only sharing your experience on how to build a multi-platform, multiplayer game on AWS using serverless containers and managed game services offerings, but also showing us the art of the possible, that a small team like yours can still achieve your big dreams with the help of AWS Cloud. To all our viewers, thank you again for taking the time to watch this session and hope you liked it. Please do fill out the session survey that you'll find below and let us know your feedback. Thank you all.